Nitro is the glory, but E-Buggy pays the bills. Yes, indeed, Nitro is the glory, but E-Buggy pays the bills. What's going on, everybody? It is 2021. Happy New Year. I hope you guys enjoyed your Christmas. I know I did. I relaxed. I had family over. It was awesome. My kids enjoyed it. We took a break. Uh, over Christmas, which I usually do because, you know, time to recharge. But I don't really take breaks because silly season was going on. Full charge, you know, especially last week. It just came at us. Boom, 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 boom. A lot of things that uh, we talked about on this uh, before Christmas came to fruition. So that's pretty good. But I think we're going to, you know, just take these, make these little videos and analyze different moves. So like the title of this uh, video says... This is about the move that I think is probably the biggest and most, probably the biggest move since this guy actually moved away from this company back in 2005. I'm talking about Ryan Cavallari leaving S-Works and Raw Speed and going to TLR ProLine, the Horizon Hobby Dream Team. But I think, honestly, this is the best move for Cavallari, and he has now lined himself up to win a world championship. So, in this video, we're going to analyze that and take a look at it. To start off, we're going to look at how this came about and take a brief look at Cav's history. So, we all know Cav has been around for a very long time. He's part of the three the, the three guys that kind of have changed RC, Tebow, Mayfield, Cav. <laughs> he's won multiple championships, multiple world championships, multiple national titles, multiple big races. Cav's done it. He, in my opinion, he's the, he's the GOAT. I am a fan of Cav, but the last few years of his career have been very tormentous or tormentous. I don't know. One of those words. It's been filled with turmoil. But let's have a look at where it all started. Uh, you know, first off. So, Cav, in 2003, Cav's racing, he wins his first of three four-wheel drive world championships with Team Losi. I think at the time he becomes the youngest driver to ever do that. Not quite sure in his age. I think it was 15 and something. But hey, Cavallari, he's the first one to win a world championship out of these three. Two years later, he leaves Losi and goes to uh, AE, which is where his career really took off. 2005, he joins AE, wins three more world championships, two, uh, two more four-wheel drive, one two-wheel drive. Neo Buggy and 8 Scale, all these, all these great accomplishments that Cav has done, which I think makes him worthy of being the GOAT. And he's still young. He's got time to do more of this. But let's, let, you know, he goes to AE. This is where he has the majority of his success. AE comes up with an 8 Scale platform. They're trying to race it, you know, but he's still very successful in 10 Scale. And he sees success in 8 Scale as well. Near the end of his tenure at AE in 2018, things got a little bit shaky. He's openly, I mean, it starts off in 2017. I believe Cav gets suspended for a month for like insubordination. Just like, I think he got emotional and told everybody off at a race one day. Red Thalke, Dino Dan, all that type, all those guys. I think we even talked about it. I think he was upset. He thought maybe Rifkin was getting parts that he didn't get. But I think this kind of started the downfall of his time at AE. He openly was critical of the 8-scale platform. He wasn't happy. He expressed that he wanted to leave. And at the end of 2018, Cav finally left, or they agreed to leave from AE. And in a very drawn-out, silly season, he actually went Yokomo first. So we knew he was going Yokomo and J-Concepts. I believe he had moved to J-Concepts too. Uh, he went there, and then we didn't know where he was going to go for 8-scale. And then it was a fight between Serpent S works even JQ, even though he was out of that race a long time before that. And then my big thing was I thought he was going to go TLR at that time. Anyway, as we know, he ended up at S works in Yokomo for 2019. I mean, he didn't really have a really great year with Yokomo. Something didn't click. He didn't like the cars. And at the end of 2019, going into 2020, the Yokomo Cavalry, uh, uh, collaboration kind of stopped. Well, I don't know the full details. I don't know if he got fired, if they agreed to mutually terminate his, uh, his 
contract or whatever. But basically, he was out at Yokomo. And at the end of the year, 2019, he was out at JC. So these are two big paychecks, two big blows to the ego for, for Cavalieri. And even myself as a fan, we said it many times in the podcast, Joseph thought he was done with RC. I kind of, you know, I kind of was like, okay, he's kind of out. Now he went S-Works full-time. He was running the, the 10 scale program. In two-wheel drive buggy, he was running the TLR car a lot. So he is familiar with this package. But, you know, just like, yeah, he went S-Works. And no offense to S-Works. Uh, they, are not, they are not a minor league team. But I kind of compare this to Cav being a major league star in baseball or let's use baseball for an example. And he's in the major leagues and he's having like, he's, he gets sent down to the minor leagues for a couple of years to build or a year to build himself back up. And that's what he kind of done. I think he goes down to S works who by no terms are a minor league team. But when I say they are a minor league team, I mean in the form of support and uh, history in America, they are in the minor leagues. I mean, S works is a big company worldwide, but they aren't, as big as AE, TLR, or some of these bigger companies in America. So Cav goes to a smaller team, less support, has to do it on his own, starts out 2020, kind of shaky, a so-so performance at DNS, a so-so performance at PNB. Obviously, we didn't have much racing this year, but he raced enough. Going on to Wicked Weekend to, to win at a, you know, a lower entry race, but still had very serious competition there, his top, some top guys there. Then to top it off at AMS, Winning Pro Nitro buggy in a stacked pro field at the end of this year, at the end of 2020. So we see Cav has turned himself around. He went from literally we thought he was going to be out of RC, making these obscure deals. Even Raw Speed, to an extent, is a minor league when it comes to they're not as big as the other companies in in RC, and, and that's important to these guys because that's a big network of support and information that they need. So if you really look at this. What we're witnessing is probably one of the greatest comebacks in RC history. Cav at the top of his game, AE, struggles, leaves there, burns bridges, goes to Yokomo, hey, struggles there, goes 2020, has a great 2020, but you, you know, re- kind of starts the rejuvenation of his career. And this is the next step in becoming even greater than he is already, in my honest opinion. So, like I said, He's out at S-Works, out at Rossbeat. He's joined TLR and ProLine. No big surprise here. We mentioned this uh, maybe a month ago in our first Silly Season uh, video that he was going to, that, you know, pretty much a sure thing that he was going to TLR and ProLine. He's gone back home where he won his first world championship. I love it. I thought this move probably should have happened in 2018. But looking back, maybe Losi was not ready in 2018. They were still in some turmoil. You know, their platform was, eh, that's for the best. Kevin Gahan was still the team manager, but there was a lot going on with TLR. You know, they had not really overcome the firing or the let go of Drake that they, they did in 2016. They are still suffering the blowback for that in 2018. So maybe they were not ready to hire Cav because Cav is is high maintenance too as a as a team driver. But fast forward 2020, at the end of 2020, TLR is in a much better position. Thank thanks to Thomas Tran. He's he's actually set up, he's done an amazing job in the one year that he's been there. He is also now the pro line team manager. So it only fits, you know, they go for Cavalieri, the GOAT. I think this is probably the best move of Silly Season and the biggest move since he actually moved from TLR to AE. Why do you why is this such a good move? Let's let's take a look at this. Why this is such a good move. So for Cavalieri, he's done two years of kind of grinding it out, doing it on its own with a team that isn't as supported, doesn't have the support in America with S Works. Yes, with Yokome he had the support, but then the one year without that. Probably getting really close with the TLR guys because he was running the TLR two-wheel drive buggy in in lieu of the S Works two-wheel drive buggy. So I guess this plan was coming all along, all 2020, he was planning this. All I can say is I think that Cav now has the equipment or the tools to finally win an eight-scale world championship. Like I said, it was no secret he was not confident in the AE platform. I'm not talking about the current AE platform, which I think is really good, but back in the past, openly wanted to be out of there. Because these guys, don't, let, don't get it twisted. They won an eight-scale world championship. He is a four-time, 10-scale world champion. 
four time Rudy champion, Neo Buggy champion, national champions, but he wants one of those eight scale world championships. So does Tebow, so does Mayfield. Now he has a car that I think fits his driving school. I'm not hurt saying that the TLR is the best platform out there. I just think it's the best platform for Cav. I think it's going to have a lot of steering, which he likes. He's going on probably, like, people were talking about Proline and the Proline, of course, the Proline Purge, but Proline is still a racing tire, and he'll be racing them. Like, he's the greatest. He's the four-time world champion. He's going he's gonna to have probably one of the best tires, if not the best tire in RC. No offense to the other tire companies uh, behind him. But what, what people don't understand is the networking, the, 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 the people behind the scenes that are going to be helping him. He now is working with Horizon. He's working with the engineers. He can say to Frank Root, I guess this is how it works. Hey, let's go to OCRC. Let's do some testing. I need help with this. He can go to their eight-scale uh, engineer or whoever is doing their eight-scale program. Let's go to ProLine Track because now Horizon earns ProLine so they can use the, the track anytime they want to do unlimited testing. He has all this at his back and call, which he kind of did not have at S-Works. That's not S-Works's fo- S-Works fault. They just didn't have that support network at, uh, in America yet, and they're building that up. He also has a plethora. I mean, the TLR team has grown substantially. There's been some loyal guys who have run in it for the last three years. There's new guys coming on. The team has grown. Thomas Tran's done a great job. You know, it's the whole Horizon package. Horizons, a lot of these guys are running a lot of the Horizon package, which I think is eventually how you're going to get the best deal on Proline tires. That's a video for another time. But here he is. He's got a car that he likes. He's got a tire package that he likes. He's got a plethora of, he's got engineers that can work with him. He's got, he's got drivers with all of all skill levels that he can draw information from. I mean, I saw the pits at DNC this year for TLR. It was humongous. He has all of this. Barry Baker's helping out and and he's probably going to help out uh, uh, Cavalry as well. And he has Fenn. This is something else we're going to see. For a while, Fenn has really had nobody to challenge his top spot at TLR. Well, here comes the GOAT. He's got world championships. He's got national titles. He's coming into TLR, in my opinion. He has to come into TLR and establish that he's the big dog. I'm Cavalry. I'm the greatest of all time. Yes, you're the phenom, but you haven't got my accomplishments. TLR is my house. Yes, you know that TLR is Fenn's house. And eventually, you know, he's the company man. And eventually, don't be surprised when Fenn is running Proline tires as well next year in 2021 when his contract's up with JC. But this is what Cav needs to come in. He, he's super confident right now. Coming off that win, coming to TLR, establish that he's the big dog, and start kicking ass and taking names. He doesn't have much time. Let's be real. He doesn't have much time to be faster. He kind of has to come in and be fast right away. Yes, he'll have some leeway, but he needs to show speed right away of this car for Horizon TLR to have confidence in him. I'm sure he has a two-year contract, but for him, he needs to do this right away. Also, one thing TLR, Tran, Barry Baker, and these guys are going to have to keep in in check with Cav is we all know that Cav is emotional. He can get emotional, and he wears his his heart on his sleeve, I've seen him blow up with his dad, at Richard Saxton, at other people. This is something that TLR should nip in the butt. No. Don't allow it to infiltrate their team. Don't allow Cavalieri to do that. He's getting older now. I get it. I understand you get passionate. It's nothing wrong with getting upset. We've got to learn to control that. It doesn't look good. So hopefully they have that worked out for Cav. Uh, Hopefully Cav's gotten older and they figure, and he just kind of, you know, goes with the flow more. For Cav- also, for Cavalieri, honestly, I feel if he's going to win a world, eight-scale world championship, him, Mayfield, Tebow, this is their best chance whenever the world championships happen. We aren't sure that we'll see a world championship here in 2021, but it's looking like 2022. So he has a year to get ready and prepare, but now he has the tools. I put him now in that class with Cavalieri. I'm sorry, with Mayfield, Tebow, David Ranafok, Ongaro. There's a few guys that are kind of looking on the outside, looking in, but are very close. But I would say that those top five, if you was to drop them in a world championship setting right now, any one of those guys could come out and be a world champion. 
For a while, Cav wasn't in that top five. Yes, he was kind of on the bubble outside looking in, but I feel with this move to TLR and ProLine, he's just cemented, you know, to finish off his legacy as the greatest of all time. I think he's going to kill it in 10 scale and 8 scale. I think you're going to see him running a little bit more club racing in, Amer I'm sorry, in California, maybe more JBR, JBRL races, stuff like that, because you have the support, you have the team to help him out when he goes to these races and stuff like that. And I think that's just going to make him so much faster. Really, I do. I'm going to do, we're going to do a power rankings team. TLR ranks really high on that. And, you know, we're going to analyze many other silly series and moves. But truly, I feel that Cavalry Pro Line is the best move of silly season 2020. It's the biggest move. And it's going to be one of the most significant moves. We're going to see the rewards right away. I think if everything goes right, we're going to see Cav just following on from where he left off in AMS. Maybe I'm not saying he's going to win every race, but he's going to be in the hunt. He's going to have bad races too. There's just some places he's just going to have a bad race at. We have to accept that. But I honestly feel that Cav has made the right moves to extend his career. I mean, remember, we had him out of racing. Now it looks like he's in for a little bit, for, for some more time, at least two years. And I think really... If things go well, the next World Championship, we can see Cav maybe winning that. Possibly winning that. I don't see why he can't. Let me know what you guys think. Maybe I missed out something here, but I honestly think that this truly is the best move of Silly Season. I'm kind of waiting for all the other moves to plan out. We still are waiting to know where Tessman's going, even though I kind of know. That's a good, interesting move as well. I really want to make a video of why, what I think about Pro line, what Pro Line kind of done here recently with I called it the purge. I think you guys are going to be a little bit surprised on my take on that because I actually kind of agree with it, you know. Um, and a lot of little things. I'm trying to do little videos like this of different topics in RC. Maybe we'll. It depends how things are and how workflow is. Maybe you'll see multiple of these type of videos weekly. Let me know what you think. I'm trying to keep them short. I know I went on a little further, a little longer than usual, but hey. Thank you guys for the support. We will be back with the podcast next week. Uh, Joseph and I are planning things because we, we also are waiting, like I said, for Silly Season to pan out so we can talk about those moves more. But let you let me know what you think about this, this analysis of what uh, this move for Cav. Do you think I'm right? Do you think he's going to kill it? Do you think he's going to flop? I don't, you know, what, what if you think he's going to flop, why do you think he's going to flop? If you think he's going to kill it, do you agree with me why he's going to kill it? Do you have some other reasons? I'll be interested to see what you guys think. So leave it in here in the comments. Remember, everybody, uh, we are trying to grow this YouTube channel. So if you can give me a like, a sub, I appreciate that. And a share, I really appreciate it. It helps grow this podcast. Thank you to everybody that supports the podcast, the NNRC squad. Can't do this without you guys. And thank you to the patrons of NNRC. This channel has a patron. If you guys wish to support it, help us grow, help us do things, go to races here in the future. Yeah, join the Patreon and help us out. But remember, hit that like button, hit that sub button, share if you can. There will be more coming. If you guys have some topics that you want me to go over, send me a message. I'm looking for content. I'm looking to do content on lots of things. So remember, Nitro's the glory, e-buggy pays the bills, and Lefty out.